All right, I'm going to tap two, and uh, you have to subscribe. Hey, Internet, I'm Steve, and welcome to Raffo. Magic the Gathering, second only to D&D &D in terms of nerd games, and Brandon Sanderson's favorite social activity. He was the guest of honor at the 2022 MTG Summit. He showed off his custom cube on game nights, and he's of course written a novella for Wizards of the Coast and created a planeswalker for them. Plus, he's actually on a magic card. With the recent Randy Vargas Secret Lair featuring officially unofficial art of a Knight Radiant, I figured it was high time to create a Cosmere-focused commander deck. Now, there are some incredible decks that other people have built that may be more cohesive and uh, flavory than mine. This one, with all the custom proxies, is just... But this is giving me an excuse to buy more cards, so I'm doing it. I've got a problem, guys. <laughs> so I now present the Brandon Sander deck. Brando Sand deck? Brandy Sand... We're heading this deck off with Chulain, Teller of Tales, a storyteller with white hair and a hawkish face who appears to be light-weaving figures out of smoke. I mean, it's Hoyd. Yes, I know, Brandon has said that Hoyd would be five-color, or at least Uberg, but come on! He cares about casting creatures and exploring the universe. So what other main characters can we get on the board? Starting on Roshar, we of course have Grand Abolisher by Randy Vargas. When I first saw this card, I knew that in like 17 different ways, it was definitely a Cosmere reference. The glowing eyes, shard plate, shard blade, very similar in design to Nail's Honor Blade, wreathed in stormlight, and the flavor text is Journey... Dot, dot, dot. Randy confirmed on his Twitter that the ideal flavor text would be Journey Before Destination, but wasn't possible because of legal issues. We can just pretend it's someone else saying it before Nail interrupts them. Taln is known as the Herald of War, and establishes the human sub-theme of the deck. We have the other Knights Radiant represented with Hwatli, Radiant Champion, the Light Weaver sorry, Light Wielder Paladin, and Wind Dancer Sill is ready to spirit bond and make other people fly. Just watch out for any high storms or the elemental giant in the sky. In this deck, Storm Daddy Thrix. Edge Dancers get a specific reference with Radiant Grace, which basically turns into the Oath Pact. That old broken bond. We've got some Surge Binding powers in here as well. Regrowth by name, and Tireless Provisioner is a good approximation of soul casting. Veil's here, so is Azure, and Dalinar is considered by many to be a false prophet who was touched by honor after receiving a careful cultivation when he visited the Night Watcher. Of course, there's Kremlings all over the place, you need to be careful of Chasm Fiends on the Shattered Plains, and Crabs have a way of haunting you. And for my boon... <sighs> Painful, but it has to be in there. We also have the most powerful world hopper in the Cosmere represented, the stick. We don't have any red in this deck, or else it actually could be fire. Hopping over to the Ash Barons of Scadriel, the Warhammer 40k version of this card is perfect, where Vin is a shardless agent in a mist cloak. The other printing of this actually looks like it has tassels in the background, but she's more Vin-y to me. You need to avoid anyone under the influence of Ruin's Ghost, or you could get spiked by an Inquisitor. Unless you show up during Era 2, where you might meet Wax and Wayne, or the Masked Admirers of the Southern Continent. We've got a bunch of Alimantic Metals represented too. Iron and Steel, Brass, which ferrochemically stores heat, so this flavor text is perfection, Copper, Grant's Ward, what? <laughs> bronze, and Gold. And remember, survive. Or at least come back from the graveyard, which is pretty on brand too. Nalthus is getting more and more tied into the rest of the Cosmere, especially with the Four Scholars plus Vasher, wielding the Blackblade, which is known to be pretty bloodthirsty. We've seen Awakeners on multiple worlds, often using their Blessed Breath to give life to little dolls, which washes out color from their surroundings. Residents of Cell recently came to the forefront as well. Seons have become the long-distance telephone of the Cosmere. Shy's running around stamping everything she can, and somebody just gained the ability 
to draw glowing runes in the air, adding yet another way to light weave to their repertoire. A crossover I never expected, there's a card which brings Parshendi into the forests of hell, making them a Threnody singer. That's of course near where ambition was broken, which may be why shades appear there. Naj is from Threnody, and we've got his Silver Knife. One of my favorite cards in terms of flavor gives a moment to silence. She's very strict on following the simple rules, specifically no shedding of blood. A few more nods to the wider Cosmere made it into the deck. Birds of Paradise shows Aviar flying around Potji, and Beast Whisperer features Six of the Dusk and Sock. We saw the disruption that spores can be in Tress of the Emerald Sea, and that's not even the primary manifestation of Aethers. We've got White Sand, and it can do some serious damage if used properly. We've already talked about several different shards who are able to touch the spirit realm. Of course, there's world hoppers running around everywhere. And remember when we saw that arcane lighthouse on a deserted beach? And Brandon Sanderson himself is conjuring divine figures whenever he shows up. All told, it actually plays pretty well. Don't get me wrong, it's janky, but the human sub-theme works alright. I played it at our weekly game night and managed to pull off a win against two other fairly robust decks. And testing it alone at my desk, Suni Pup didn't put up much of a fight. Even for all its jank though, just playing the deck is fun. Commander has an element of storytelling to it, so seeing all these pieces from all the different worlds that I love come together in new and interesting ways was really exciting. Some of my favorite moments, slapping a mist cloak on a fused for consistent card draw, giving Naja's knife to a conveniently human night watcher, having a singer bond the fused, Nail bonding with Sill in order to fly, with spirit bonds out, summoning the storm father and getting an extra honor spren, giving Hoy a hemallergic spike, just lots of fun. Being a hundred card format and missing two colors, there were some painful cuts we had to make. Due to these restrictions, we weren't able to include Sanderson's own planeswalker, Davriel Kane. Got him in the flavor text of Command Tower, though. We couldn't call the Skybreaker, and the Fourth Bridge Prowler had to prowl somewhere else. My original concept of this deck included a bunch of literary references, too. Barry in books, a couple of libraries, and I was really sad when I had to cut Curious Homunculus. This is me when I read. I also started with like 17 crabs. I built this deck with the help of my patrons, so big thanks to Doug for all of his input. We're also talking about magic, so of course big thanks to Steve. I interviewed Mr. Argyle a while ago and talked all about his gathering with Sanderson. You can watch that right here. And as always, thank you to Matt, the third world hopper in the bunch, as well as thanks to all my other supporters, including Data Gremlin. So what cards do you think should have been included or swapped out? Deck building is an ever evolving process, so either comment below or join my Discord and I'd love to read and find out.